morning motivation. Life is full of beauty. Notice it. Notice the bumblebee, the small child, and the smiling faces. Smell the rain and feel the wind. Live your life to the fullest potential and fight for your dreams. Ashley Smith. Let's start day 11. So day 10 was a trip, you know, I fought my way up to Klingman's Dome, which is the highest point on the Appalachian Trail to catch a, a sunset. And the sky was clear enough that I visibility was really cool. I got some good pictures, some good video. I mean, I've been very lucky that way this trip. As maybe you can see, it did rain last night. Thunder, lightning, all that good stuff. I guess I've been out here just enough to not necessarily be bothered by that, but the crackling of trees over my tent was a bit bothersome. Hmm. Yesterday I got to hike in and out with a group. They had decided that they were the cool kids and I was definitely the outsider. Uh, we were intermittently stopping at shelters for food and, and water breaks and you know we were loosely keeping the same pace only one person reached out and wanted to know a name and everybody else just stayed within their own little clique yeah oh my god high school they're the cool kids and I'm the outsider okay well I must say that it did give me a little bit of satisfaction when they stopped for camp and I walked the fuck right by them that was just my way of saying Bye, Felicia. But let's keep day 11 more, more positive. I have about five miles to walk, and then I'm going to be picked up by Aaron, and that's going to allow me to dry off my gear, clean some of my gear, sleep in a hotel bed. Woo! I hope that I'm not uncomfortable in the bed, wishing I was laying on a harder surface. That would be very Crocodile Dundee-like. <clears throat> Yep, and, uh, you know, go to the grocery store and everything and get some food. So I'm excited for some rest and some relaxation and to get out of this this wet stuff. So I'm going to have to walk five or six miles to the pickup point. Yippee skippy. All right, the attitude of gratitude is back. Hey, I just want to do a thank Todd and his daughter. He gave me a bottle of water and a bag of Cheez-Its. And they were delicious and he wanted to know all about the trail and he was hoping to retire soon and do the trail himself so todd follow your dreams and hope you get that chance and thanks so much for being a friendly face at clingman's dome watch it talk curtis the adorable explorer get it dora the explorer curtis hey we met on a trail right i was going one way you were going the other and you're like, hey, uh, are you Brad? And of course I'm like, I don't know you. That what had happened is my wife Erin left a package at the end of the trail for me to pick up. And when he was on that end, he looked at oh, Brad. Brad. Said, hey, you might be Brad. And he was right. And since then we've been friends. And he's been very supportive of my hikes. I had two attempts of the Wachita. The second one I was successful. He supported me on both. Thank you, brother, for that. And thank you for your support on this trail as well. We did a fall break was super cool. Or it was cool to my stepson Alan and the Eagle Rock loop as well would not have known about it or hiked it if it was not for you curtis and i appreciate your friendship man you're a cool dude today day 11 right we're suspending disbelief this is my shout out for you man keep following the sun morning motivation the earth has music for those who listen william shakespeare give me some kisses give me some kisses that's a good girl <laughs> wacky video stuff <laughs> <laughs> is this the work of a bear or just a really hungry through hiker looking for an extra snack? This is what's going on. Let me show you behind me. Look at that. Oh, newfound gap. It's like Disneyland for people that like to pull out, take a picture. And that's where I took my 
day off. Aaron and Alan picked me up there midday, day 11. And now here I am starting up again, midday, day 12. More to come shortly. Don't want to be recording while people are walking by. It's weird. All right, so here's how day 11 went. I walked about five miles to a newfound gap. I got soaked in the process. Aaron wasn't gonna show up for four hours. So basically, I waited at a rest area in the bathroom to try to stay warm and to get warm. And you know, for people that don't like the smell of doo-doo, I guess you gotta be put in the position where you're like, stay warm and smell other people's doo-doo or go outside and get colder and wetter. Sounds powerful. Anyway, but I did get picked up by Aaron and we had to go out and party, went to Gatlinburg and man, that place is a madhouse. I mean, people everywhere, it was a, that was a zoo. And we ended up getting a room and I got to do laundry and shower and all those essential things, go to the store, get some food, eat some day old fried chicken. Aaron told me that after four showers, I still smell. And she thought that that was very interesting. So there's your fun fact. It turns out that that hiker smell just, just wants to stay with you. It's just warm and cozy and cuddly. Oh. So I think, you know, five miles total on day 11, but super sweet opportunity to recharge with Aaron, Allen, and Oreo, the wonder pup of love and constant kisses. And her tongue is like a COVID test when she sticks it in your nose, it tickles your brain. Uh, for now, I'm out. I have to try to make it to mile marker 270 by the end of day 14 which means I have half of today, Friday and Saturday, or 13 and 14, depending upon how you're working out your numbers. And I forgot the dates, whatever today is, and then two days, whatever. Hot Springs is my next pickup spot. So that I can get off trail and see Erin, her daughter, Alan, Oreo, for a day and a half, and then back out on trail. But if you're with me, let's do the math. It is 207, Newfound Gap. I'm gonna to go to 270. So we're talking about 63 miles in two and a half days. Last weather report I looked at, looks like it's supposed to rain tomorrow and the next day. I have totally painted myself into a corner with the logistics of these two stops. So, I, at the very least, I hope you enjoy watching me try to tackle the nonsense that is that dilemma. The sign reads, Charlie's Bunyan, closely control your children. That sounds a bit intimidating. What's it like to go hiking on the Appalachian Trail? And frankly, on many hiking trails, it is like standing on top of the world because you are literally standing on top of the world. 
Shout out to my grandpa, Jack. Wild and crazy are two words I would use to describe you. And when I say the word crazy, I mean it with all due respect for people who live with and manage and deal with mental illness on a regular basis, as did my grandpa and as does myself. My grandpa, when I was 10 years old, wanted to take me swimming and I had a cast on and he said, hey, don't worry, I'll saw it off. This week was before it was supposed to be taken off. He's just like, I don't care. So he sawed off the cast and boom, we went swimming. Well, a couple years later, he decides he wants to take me fishing. So he takes me fishing and he chums to get a fish on the line, you know. So he, he broke a rule, you know, he broke a law. And, you know, maybe should he have done that? Not necessarily, but he did give his grandson a memorable fishing experience. And I don't like fishing. So, you know, for that, I don't know. Means, ends, justified, I don't know. But my grandpa was wild and crazy and he found something in the woods. And he had a passion and a love for being outdoors and being in the woods. And I do too. And I hope that whatever he found out here, I find too. Because quite often people who are considered crazy are just living life through a really radical sense of sunglasses. And my grandpa had a cool pair of sunglasses. So when people call me wild and crazy, I go, you're damn right.